says they both need, need speaking to. Uh, I, I think I compared it a couple of days ago to the good cop, bad cop. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and uh, exactly. Yeah, My yeah. wife who's in the audience says the first time I've ever been called a good cop. So that, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> well, I was the bad cop until Christopher Hitchens came along. And yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, in, yeah, so what, actually, so do you think Christopher Hitchens goes too far? I'll put you on. He's one of the most eloquent people I've ever heard. Yes, yes. Um, uh, he has a, a thrilling voice like Richard Burton. I'd hate to have him on the other side of me in any, in any argument. Um, if we ever talked about the Iraq war, I'd be on the other side yeah, of him. I've tried, um, it's And uh, I, I wouldn't wish that. Um, I, no, I don't think he goes too far on anything else apart from the Iraq war. I, I, I think... Um, okay, so... Think, okay, so really you don't... Okay, that's interesting, because... Yeah. Well, I agree with you, but, but, I, but I was under the impression that, you know, we talked about one of, the, well, one of my favorite lines in his book, which I really shouldn't say in a public forum, but I will. Um, no, 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 we don't, we don't. I know what that one is. Read yeah. his book. Uh, um, but uh, uh, it is an interesting line, and, it, um, and I'll be happy to. It's, it's a... Okay, okay, okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, I no, go know. ahead, go okay. ahead. Um, which is where he discusses what he says. What he says is the motto of the Roman Catholic Church, which is, no child's behind left. And, um, and okay, now, are you sorry you asked? Um, but, uh, but I, you don't think you went too far with that? Uh, well, with that line, I, 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 oh, okay. I um. But, but I, okay, let's bring it back, because I, I, know, I know we're actually going to be, be getting ready for the question period in a minute from everyone else. But we're, this, this, uh, this symposium is about education in mm. some sense. And, and it's interesting to me that you said that, that you really, um, your purpose is to destroy religion. Is that really your purpose? No, no. I, mean, I, 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 say, I don't think it really is. It was, a, it was, a, it was a, uh, an, an interesting piece of, of contrarian reasoning to, yeah. what, to what you were saying. Because um, you, you were saying you don't have to be an atheist to believe in evolution. Mm -hmm. And um, that, of course, is exactly... Then I tell people to go and read Ken Miller, yeah. Francis Collins, uh, and indeed any re reputable clergyman. But if a larger view is that the, the presence or absence of a God in the universe is, I mean, that's a huge question. I think it's a scientific question. I have a view on it, and I try to um, raise consciousness about it. Then if it's true that there are lots and lots of people who think that evolution is incompatible with religion, and I actually do think it is, you see. I actually do think it is. But even if I didn't, if I were a propagandist, trying to destroy religion. I would seize on that. Because it, it doesn't follow that because there are people who think that, um, that if you believe in evolution, you've got to be an, 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 an atheist. Therefore, the obvious conclusion is to say, oh, no, no, you don't have to be. I mean, it, you could do it exactly the other, other way around and say, yes, well, as a matter of fact, yes, you do have to be an atheist if you believe in evolution. And here's all the evidence for evolution, yeah, yeah. and you can't get away from it. Um, well, of course, that wouldn't go down well with Ken Miller or... Or, or Francis Collins, but, but I, I could come back and give good, good arguments for why I think there actually is an incompatibility. Yeah, well, sure, absolutely. But would you really have a hope of success if you if you're working against something that's instilled in children from the time they're very young and it, it doesn't go into their brain, it goes somewhere else? So that P probably I mean, not. I think if you say to people, and I, I think it's an interesting idea, but if you say to people, yeah, you have to be an atheist to believe in evolution, yeah. you're not because of that because faith is so emotional you're not going to get past that point, I think. Well, I, I think that's right. And as a matter of fact, I do recommend Kenneth Miller's book to any religious person who, who writes to me. Uh, and, and so th that's your answer. I mean, I, I do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I mean, I'd say, I, I, and I knew you did. And I think that, I mean, presumably... Well, let's, let me ask another question, maybe uh, near the end, but, and, and, well, and then you can ask me one at the end, I guess. But, um, when you were writing The Selfish Gene, which is your f first book, I mean, the purpose was to explain the remarkable aspects of evolution. It probably wasn't, it probably had nothing to do with religion at the time. No, 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 of course. I mean, I, my, my, my main purpose is science and, yeah. and the education 
in, in science. Um, I suppose there's a slight difference in that I do think the existence of God is a scientific question. I'm not yeah, one of those who, totally I don't go along with Steve Gould on, 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 on that. I mean, I, th I think it is a scientific question. Well, uh, yeah, and, and in fact, I, I've argued in this country that plays into the hands of people like the Discovery Institute who try and claim it's a scientific question. Yes, I know. And, yeah. uh, but I think that, that the, um, the and, and this is probably where we both agree, and maybe it's a good time to, to go to the questions, uh, um, unless you have something pressing you want to ask me. The, the, uh, you wrote Selfish Gene, and, and I've written my books because uh, we find the real world so amazing. Uh, that it'd be better if more people knew about it. And, and I guess, and part of my reason there is somewhat the same as yours, are not so much focused against incorrect beliefs, but I actually think the world would be a better place if we were willing to understand, just accept it for what it is. Absolutely. And, and without, without fear and without terror, or, and, and, and that would, if that governed public policy, just to say well, well, public policy and our life will be based on accepting the world for what it is without, without preconception and fear, then the world would be a better place. Absolutely. I, I couldn't, I mean, that, that, I can't disagree with that. Um, I, my, my whole life has been devoted to explaining science because it's wonderful. I mean, here we are on this planet and maybe the only planet in the universe where there is anything capable of understanding why it's there. We may be the, our brain may be the only object in the entire universe that has the capacity to understand to internalize the universe in the sense of setting up a, a model of the, of the universe. So it is an amazing privilege to be alive, to be capable of understanding, to be alive in the 21st century when understanding of the universe and, and of life is far, far greater than in any past, past century. We should make the most of that and we should, and those people who, who are deprived of the opportunity to learn about how wonderful reality is, uh, it's, it's simply tragic that they should go to their grave missing out on the opportunities that, that an understanding of science, not, not the practice of science yeah. necessarily, not, not Bunsen burners and things, but, but understanding the scientific method and understanding what an enormous amount is, is known, and the challenge of how much is not known. Exactly. How much there is still work yet to do. Yeah, and we give, we give people the impression that scientists really want to, and in fact, they, the people use that on, on, who are countering science all the time, they say, scientists, they just want to, they have this picture, and it's a story. First of all, that's, that's the first thing they lie, they tell about science. It's a story. It's not a story. It's more than a story. It makes predictions, and, and that's vitally important. Uh, but but it's, it's, they want to have this little bit of knowledge, and they don't want it to be attacked. When in fact it's exactly the opposite. The thing that drives scientists forward, certainly drives me and, I, and everyone else I know, is, to, is actually the, the stuff we don't understand. And moreover, it's not as if we want to always agree with our colleagues, because the way you get famous is by proving them wrong. And that's what you go into work every day, is you want to prove all your colleagues wrong. And, and, uh, and in fact, uh, getting back to education, to me, the one thing that I hope every student has at some point in their life, and I tell this explicitly, and I think it's really profoundly important, the one experience that I hope you have in either high school or college or somewhere in your education is to have some belief that you profoundly, deeply hold proved to be wrong. Because that is the most eye-opening experience you can have, and as a scientist, to me, it's the most exciting experience I could ever have. So I think we should switch to two questions. Okay.